the back. A couple things to tell you about here on the outside. Especially right here with the 581 is the sail. And everything you see up above will drop down into that sail. Do some tubes at the top of the periscopes. That's how we see underwater. The rest of the tubes are a variety of antennas, radars, electronic countermeasures, and sonar. Large black structure out of the back is the snorkel. Top part fresh air, bottom part exhaust for the diesel engines. Sticking out of the side, one of four dive plates that we use to control the angle of our dive. We have one on either side of the sail, sail plants, and we've got one on either side of the rudder, which are the stern plants. 581 means this is the 581st submarine commissioned by the Navy since 1900. Obviously put this section in. Makes it a lot easier to get in and out of the sub. The stairs are steep though, it's about a 45 degree angle. So going inside, please hang on to the handle. Any outside questions? Prior military. What branch would you do? Navy, what you do? Submarines, what you cap? And I want to thank you for pushing my sonar down for the wall. Any other branch? Active duty army, military intelligence. Yes, I know it's an oxymoron. I've heard it before. Any other branch? Current military. Future. <laughs> but last December, when we did it again, it was the 12th consecutive time. Thank you guys for your service. Folks, follow me. We'll head inside the boat. Again, please hang on to the hand. Boise. Yeah. Yeah, This is good. You guys got on board all right. You got around that table pretty good. However, this is a submarine, not an aircraft carrier. Submarine fleet, we're a very tight knit group, so go ahead and squeeze closer together and we'll get more around that table. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> My record yeah. is 27. 27? <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Children, maybe. Yeah. 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 I going to say, I don't think that's going to happen. Oh, there you go. Woo! Absolutely. We'll stack you under here. <laughs> are you guys comfortable? Good. Yeah. Body heat keeping us warm. Anybody not comfortable? I am. You're not comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the submarine. <laughs> <laughs> on board this boat we had a crew of 85. Eight officers, 77 enlisted. Cramming sailors on board vessels is not unique to the submarine fleet. The ship that I was stationed on, we had a crew of 430. Our newest aircraft carrier, the USS George H.W. Bush, the full squadron on board, has a crew of about 6,000. The eight officers that we did, uh, aircraft carrier. Hmm. Eight officers on board, seven slept back there, two to three per room. And then you have the guy in there, that's the captain. He is the most important one on board, so he does get his own room. And that room's bigger than the other ones. He's the only one on board that can actually sit up in bed and not get his head anywhere. All the meals are made downstairs in the galley. Officers' meals are then brought up here to the pantry and served to the officers. Now this is a double hauled sub. We have an inner hall and an outer hall. The outer hall is what you saw on the dock. And here's a piece of the inner hull, the pressure hull. Whoa. This is what's going to keep the ocean from squishing the boat. <laughs> also have a piece next to the wall there, next to the clock over there, and hanging over here. Now in between, we have our ballast tanks. If you take a look up here, I'll explain how this works. A series of valves at the top of the boat, a series of flood ports on the bottom. We open the valves at the top, water comes into the bottom into the ballast tanks, making us heavier than the water around us, and we submerge or dive. We do not sink. 
is thinking is what Titanic did. <laughs> Close valves, so high pressure air through the tanks, that's going to push that water up to the bottom and return us to the surface. If we do it quickly, we'll do that maneuver right over there. Mm. That's an emergency blow, and we can actually go from 700 feet to the surface in 58 seconds. Wow. Give you an idea what blueback looks like compared to the rest of the subs in the fleet. Six models of submarines, that's blueback. <laughs> Below that is a World War II fleet boat. Below that, the workhorse of the Navy, the Los Angeles class, their attack subs. On top, the Ohio class ballistic missile sub. It's the largest in the U.S. Navy. Two and a half bluebacks will fit inside. On the bottom, the largest submarine in the world. That's a Russian Typhoon class ballistic missile boat. If you take two of the Ohio's, put them side by side, it'll fit into a Typhoon. The little guy is our first commissioned submarine, the USS Holland. It was put into service in 1900. This room in here. It's also the operating room. Uh, <laughs> problem is, we do not have a doctor on board. We have a <laughs> corpsman. Corpsman is equivalent of a 15 week medical assistant, 15 week EMT. Go 15 weeks of very intense training, everything else they learn on the fleet. That corpsman can do everything from pass out aspirin to an appendicitis. Anything more serious than that, we're coming to the surface, trying to that person in a lot of hospital ships and one of the carriers. Yeah. They've actually removed an appendix on board this boat. The way the story was and told to me, there was an individual here with the book. Oh, <laughs> there was a foreman here doing the cutting. And there was a phone talker here who had a direct line to the captain. The foreman said he finished up the stitches. The phone talker told the captain. Captain did an emergency blow. And we got that person off the sub. I had to do it that way or his appendix was going to burst and he was going to die. And we were sitting at about 600 feet. Any questions? Too safe? Secret and top secret information, we actually have four. Four. Um, tech manuals, battle plans, payroll, anything like that. This one right here is the most important one, especially during football season. Oh, We'll head forward to control. As we go forward, we're going to pass by two rooms. This side over here is the radio room or communication. On this side, the yeoman shack, the office for the sub. As you go through the sub, you'll see interesting buttons, knobs, switches, and valves. My naval crew was on the surface side. I have no idea what they do. Please don't play with them. One of them could launch one of our torpedoes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we find out. <laughs> our control room and the two chairs up front are we drove the boat. Yes. Inside chair is the helmsman. He would control the dive planes above us and rudder and back. Over on the other side is the planesman. He would control the stern planes and these two guys would work together as a team and control the angle of our dive. 
Over here with the green lights is our ballast tank control panel. The green lights meant that it was safe to submerge the sub and the captain would give the order to dive. The diving officer excuse me, would come over here, grab a hold of this switch, say dive, dive, and throw the switch twice. And I will warn you, this is loud. You're going to want to plug your ears. Dive! Dive! <laughs> to go. There's Squeezing a chain here. Again, right. Well, we are in a submarine. Come on all in. Speak up loud. I know, right? Scream. You guys are good at that. Oh, that one up there's black. Why is there a baggie? What, what? What's black? There's one up there that's black. Oh, this one's a lighter green. They're all different colors. Alright, the room that we're in is a 
right now, this is the business end of the sub. Our torpedo room end. We do have several different types. Right down here, Mark 14. The little green guys are Mark 37. That one was used to sink submarines. In 1973, the Navy combined the tier bridge big guy over here. That's the Mark 48. It's a wire guided torpedo. With that wire, we can put new information to like force and speed changes. We have 22 all total. We'll put six up front, three on top, three in the bottom, 16 around us. Last time a U.S. submarine launched a torpedo in anger was the 14th of August, 1945. Right. We got 22 all total. Six will go up front, three on top, three on the bottom, 16 around us. That upper hatch up there serves two purposes. One, it's how we got the torpedoes in. It's also how we escape the submarine if we had to in an emergency. Up above, extra beds. Second best place to sleep on here next to the captain's stair. Nice and cool, nice and quiet. A lot of extra space. Any questions here? A lot of extra space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys, there. you guys foot? Oh, up there. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd get up in there somewhere. Yeah. No, no, up on top of it. Oh. We're going to head back to our crew's quarters. Go back and pass by two rooms. This side over here is the showers. Two showers, no seven, seven guys. Other side of the bathroom is what the name calls the head. Is that made of? Lithium hydroxide? Oh, that's fake. Just squish, we'll just squish your mom. I am the <laughs> I don't know. 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 I don't bunk your head. You're you're short and you don't fit either. Well, I fit, but just head to toe, right? Yeah. Wow. Sleep on your side, girl. Okay. Yeah. So, was there a height restriction in the Navy for these, or? Currently, yes. Currently, what about this one? Uh, when she was in operation, no. I didn't think so. I knew there was no. Currently, What's the, the height maximum height is six eight. Oh. Six eight. <laughs> so there's no height restriction. Yeah. When yeah. this sub was not operational, like I said, we had no height restriction. We had an electrician's mate at 6'8", we had an executive officer at 6'6", six, six, and we had a guy at temporary time assigned to the boat at 6'11". Oh Talking to the XO gosh. at 6'6", six, six, he said, the nice thing about being 6'6 six, six on a submarine like this one, this is a diesel electric submarine, so every two to three days we do have to come up to snorkeling depth to refresh the air, recharge the batteries. If there's a storm at sea, we ride that storm out. The problem with a boat like this is she has a round bottom boat. That means a lot of this and a lot of this. Um, he said at 6'6", six, six, okay. I'm locked into place. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet they don't ever get to stand up straight very often either. Mm. I know well, it's coming up. Anything above 5'5 five, five is not standing up straight. Oh, wow. 
Me. Like this room in here, this is our cruise quarters. Underneath each and every one of these beds is called a coffin locker. It's 24 inches wide, 6 feet 2 inches long, and 4 inches deep. It is where you stored everything. We have a coffin locker up right over here. Yeah. 77 enlisted. The problem? We only have 66 beds. Those have been Navy for a long period of time. Senior enlisted, all the way up forward where the blue curtains are at. They got their own bed. Junior enlisted, lucky enough to be in the torpedo room, would also get their own bed. Otherwise, you're going to be back here over on the other side, and you will be sharing a bed. Mm. Three guys sharing two beds. Now, the way that works, guy that sleeps on the top bed, he comes off sleeping, he goes to relieve the guy on watch. Guy comes down, crawls in the bed, bed's still warm from the guy that just left. That's hot bunking or hot racking. Showers once a week, two minutes long and ice cold, and before you can take that wonderful two minute ice cold shower, you had to clean out the space. Any place to store food on a sub like this one did, showers included. The way that shower works, you get in the shower, turn the water on, wet your body down, turn the water off. Takes about 10 seconds. Lather up your body, turn the water back on, rinse off your body, turn the water off. Takes about 90 seconds. Then you wipe down the shower and whatever you took out goes back in. By the time you get done doing all that, you're probably going to need another shower and you're not going to get one for another week. We if you're choose. lucky. Worst I've heard on this boat, they were out to sea for eight weeks. They took their first shower at seven and a half. Mm. Subs today of nuclear power, showers are daily. Thank you. <laughs> Green bag right over here is your laundry facility. When you return to port six to eight weeks later, you took that bag full of dirty laundry out, had that cleaned. 75% of the crew smoked, and this is a diesel electric submarine with three diesel engines. Combine the smells of the diesel, 75% of the crew smoking, two months worth of dirty laundry, once a week showers, and a variety of smells from various tanks and bilges. We call these things pig boats. Oh my gosh, I guess so. Anybody <laughs> going on here? Any questions here? No. Mm -hmm. um, some submarine sailors uh, would have would do haircuts. Um, they'd have you know, flippers and stuff, and they'd do the haircuts. Um, when this sub was in operation, beards. Some of the sailors had beards. In today's fleet beards are not authorized, and you have to maintain military haircuts. Um, haircuts. We had one guy on board that was uh, brave enough to use clippers on somebody else. Mm -hmm. usually, usually it was a crew cut. Put a comb on the clipper and just go over. So if you only do your laundry once every eight weeks, that means you got to bring enough clothes for eight weeks? No, mm -hmm. you just wear the same. You're essentially wearing what I have on right now, a set of coveralls called a poopy suit, and you'll change that once a week. You wear it for about three, four days, and then you flip it inside out and wear it for another three, four days. <laughs> mm. Take it off, it stands up on its own. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Any other questions? Ah, we're going to head back to our cruise mess. And as we go back, we'll walk by an area. You can look down and see one of the batteries. We do have 504 cells, 600,000 pounds all total, putting out about 1,000 volts of electricity. Those cells are small. Each one is only one foot by one foot by four foot and only weighs 1,200 pounds. Do you know they're lead acid or what? They are lead acid. Well, which one's the actual battery? Batteries look, the center part is the battery. It looks like this. Okay. Wow. Yeah? Uh, and this one actually has a, a walking plate over the top so you can crawl on it. And it looks like this one that's off, and this is from the front. Oh, so it's like up vertical? Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, go ahead and have a seat around one of the
Allie leans back and says, Oh, you're fine. All right, what we're doing right now is our cruise mess. And anytime you have a large gathering of people, it's going to happen here. Meetings, classes, religious services, entertainment, and of course, the movie. Against the wall, the entertainment. One of the things that we did bring in is a 16 millimeter movie projector. Set that up against the wall, and in between the two hooks, put in the movie screen. Now I got a movie theater. A good movie will have 40 people in this room. Wow, but this does not happen often. If you look against the wall, you see the olive giraffe boxes. That's how the reels get. You can tell by the size of the box, the amount of space you've seen, you're not going to get a lot of those on board. In fact, you're going to be real familiar with the good ones, because you'll be watching them over and over. It'll get to the point where we shut the sound off, let the sailors say the line, assign different characters to different sailors, run movies forward and backwards, forward and backwards. We, take, we might take one reel from four different movies as a minor character actor in each one of the reels, make our own movie. Out to sea for two months, you might have ten movies on board, so you start to get really creative after a while. Later on, Noah did come up with the VCR and television. The VHS tapes are a lot smaller than those reels, so you can get a bigger selection of movies. Out to sea with, for two months uh, with the reels, 10 movies on board. Out to sea with the VHS, 25 movies on board. The day's fleet, you can bet they love deep and blue mm -hmm. Through that window is our scullery. That's where all your dishes are washed. Now, if you're brand new to the Navy, brand new to the sub and enlisted, you're spending 90 days in there washing dishes by hand. The galley's here. That's where all the meals are made. And sub fleet does eat the best food in the military, ranging from hot dogs and hamburgers to steak and lobster. The guys do the cooking, they initially learn how to cook from the Navy. But they go on to learn how to cook at fancy restaurants, fine hotels, and culinary institutes. Some of those cooks have left table service. They've gone on to serve at some of the finest restaurants internationally. And one of the White House cooks is a sub yeah. It kind of makes up for living conditions. The problem is storage. Where do you put enough food to feed everybody? We have two 75 cubic foot freezers for frozen goods. Things that can withstand high temperatures, coffee, sugar, flour, and store back in the engine. Two dry stores for cereal, oatmeal, and rice. Things that require a cooler temperature like fruits, vegetables, eggs, cheese, we store up front in the bathroom, showers, and torpedo. After that, we get creative. If you happen to be shorter than six feet two inches tall, those beds are six feet two inches long. You just created a storage space. These chairs are hollow. We'll put food in there. We'll put food underneath the tables. We got to see for a month. We're going to take these number 10 cans and put them on the floor. We're going to line the floor. From engine to torpedo, everywhere in between, put a rubber mat on top and change the height of the room. This only becomes a problem if you're above 5'5". Five five. You learn early. Just a duck. Out to sea for two months, you're going to double stack those cans. You have to be 5'11 out to sea for two months. <laughs> Your naval career is pretty much like this. Yeah. Until yeah. you literally eat your way down to the main deck. Fresh milk for about a week, if you were brought on board at all. After that, it's evaporated or powdered. Coffee, water, and the naval favorite, bug juice. Bug juice being the Navy version of Kool-Aid. Take Kool-Aid, mix with five gallons of water, throw some sugar, that's bug juice. You can drink it. Comes in five colors, red, green, yellow, orange, and purple. One flavor, sweet. <laughs> Same Kool-Aid mixed with a gallon of water, leave out the sugar, is a cleaning solution. The brown piece come with the white handle. Probably the most popular piece of equipment on board this minute of subs. Captains have been known not to leave for it unless that is in a uh, proper working order. That piece going breaks and there's no one there to fix it. The captain knows he better turn his submarine around priority one or there will be a mutiny. That is soft serve ice cream. <laughs> we have ice cream on here 24 hours a day, seven days a week, any flavor you want it. As long as you want that. <laughs> now, having a broken ice cream machine is the second quickest way to a mutiny on board a naval vessel. The quickest? After this one, break, I'll go in there to fix it. <laughs> Lifeline of the military, the coffee machine. Has anyone ever had Navy coffee before? I will teach you folks how to make Navy coffee. Who drinks coffee? Alright, of those of you that drink coffee, who thinks they drink their coffee strong? Not her. <laughs> I will still teach you folks how to make Navy coffee. We like a little bit strong in the Navy. First of all, you start off with one of these. Eight scoops, no filter. No filter. No filter. Put that in there, put the water in, run it through, hold it up to the light. If you can see through it, pour it back. Add a couple more scoops, keep doing that until you can't see through it. Now pour it in your cup. Now take a fork and stick it in that cup. If that fork is vertical, time to drink coffee. If not, 
pour it back. Add a couple more scoops. Keep doing that until that fork is vertical. You now have Navy coffee. One cup of coffee will keep you awake for about a week and a half. The most dangerous thing on board a naval vessel is not fires or flooding. It is a chief without his coffee. You can recognize the chiefs. They're the ones walking around like this. Put a cup right here. They're very happy people. They do not have a cup. You can stay away from them. They are cranky people. Any questions? Garbage? Here's all the garbage. 85 guys on board. That's a lot of food. That's going to create a lot of garbage. And you have to have some place to put that garbage. Here on the West Coast, we call that the Pacific Ocean. Over there on the East Coast, they call that the Atlantic. So the way that that works, located in our sculler, is our garbage disposal site. We're going to take cans here. Looks. I don't like this one. We'll fill with our garbage, bottles of break, cans we squish, we throw the whole thing in there, we weigh it, make sure we weigh 50 pounds or more. If it doesn't weigh 50 pounds or more, we'll add weights to it so it does. Close the top, fill with water, pressurize it, launch it out through the bottom. We do not care what happens to this, as long as this doesn't float away from float to the top. Close the top, leaves the trail, gives away the position of the Now, if you were to launch this at 100 feet, by the time it got down to 300 feet, it would look like that. For the depths and the dosing it goes, um, more pressure is applied to it, the smaller that's going to get. Now the sub itself is made out of HY80 steel. That means it can withstand 80,000 pounds per square inch of pressure. And at 1,050 feet, this submarine will implode. This is an aluminum can, so not much beyond 300 feet. So there's not little bitty cans floating around the bottom of the ocean. That's how we do it. So that's today. Environmental laws have changed. Sea laws have changed. Um, so our getting rid of garbage has changed. If you're 50 nautical miles away from the landmass and you're going out to sea, it's fair game. You can dump into the ocean. To give you an idea what it'd be like if you didn't dump into the ocean, go home tonight, take all your doors and windows and duct tape them shut. Now take your garbage and dump in your living room. Now do that for three months. If you get between three nautical miles and 50 nautical miles, there's certain things you can and cannot dump into the ocean. There's certain locations you can and cannot dump. We've actually got a chart in our scullery that shows what can and cannot be dumped and where it can and cannot be dumped at. If you get within three nautical miles of the landmass and you dump garbage, have your checkbook ready because it's going to cost you. The ship that I was stationed on was on a guided missile cruiser. We pulled into San Diego Harbor and blew the stacks. We actually had a 10 foot pillar of black smoke behind us, kind of like being behind a city bus. When we tied up to the pier, there were five agencies waiting for us. We charged us $15,000 per agency. In addition to that, the two individuals that blew that smoke into the atmosphere were restricted to the boat for two, or the ship for two months and lost two months worth of pay. The captain said if it happened again, they would be reduced in rank. What did the crew do for exercise down here? Push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, mm -hmm. a few the crazy ones run back and forth. Most of your exercise, though, is done in port. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time of this one, big exercise craze of the early 80s hadn't kicked in yet. So most of that exercise is 12 ounces at a time. Today's fleet, uh, about every six months or so, we do a, we have a physical readiness exam. If you're between the ages of 20 and 30, for example, you had to do 29 push-ups in two minutes, four sit 40 sit-ups in two and a half minutes, or two minutes, and a mile and a half run in 13 and a half minutes. Uh, that's the bare minimum. Um, other branches, they do more than that, but then we stay on ships in air conditioning and they run around in sand. So. Any other questions? We'll head back to maneuvering. As you go back, we're going to walk by one of the engines. We have three on board. They're the same engine used on the locomotives. It's an eight-cylinder, 16 opposing piston and diesel. Got a set of pistons on the top, set on the bottom. They come together in the middle, two crankshafts. The sole purpose in life is to run a generator. We have one here on the starboard side. We got one over there on the port side. We got one in between, one level down. This easy going ladder right here was not there. It's actually known as a six man table like this one. For the crew getting in and out of the boat, just on the other side of the exit sign is a ladder. Top of that ladder is a 25 inch diameter hatch. Up the ladder through the hatch all the way to the top of the boat. It's mm -hmm.
picture of this wall real quick. Um, yeah. Ooh. This is a giant leak for mankind. Can you share? Can you share? The room that we're in now is maneuvering, which is why I cleaned the engine room. That sound you heard is a recording, about a third of what it sounded like. Temperature somewhere between 110 and 150 degrees. Start diesels from here. Once those diesels are started, switch the panels on the left and run the generators. Once the generators are charged the batteries, then we go to the other side, we run the electric motor. The electric motor runs the entire submarine front to back, including the propeller. The propeller for this sub is the one next to the museum, serving as a memorial to those who have died in sub service. Losing our first sub in 1915, our last one in 1968. 67 subs have been lost altogether, 52 of them during World War II. Top speed on this submarine is 21 knots, or about 24 miles an hour, but hardly ever traveled at that speed because at that speed our batteries lasted about 40 minutes. Go somewhere between 3 and 7 knots, that's going to allow the batteries to go about 4 days. We'd have to come up every 2-3 days so to refresh the air, recharge the batteries. Once we've recharged the batteries, we drop back down to uh, submerged levels. Submerged, we're actually quieter than our new counterpart. Uh, so it's like putting three freight trains in. If we can figure out a way to make enough food, find enough crazy people to serve for <coughs> more than 25 years without resurfacing. The longest I've heard is 160 days. Have you gone longer than that? No, 67. 67. Any questions? You want to start the boat? Yeah. You want to start the boat? Yeah. Alright, let's come over here. Take this switch right here. Flip that one up. Flip that one. Alright, do the same to that one. Do the same to that one. Oh my goodness. And go ahead and push that button right there. Okay. And I just started. Take these That's pretty neat. Wow. That was cool. Oh, here it is. Oh, oh yeah. Touch it again. <laughs> Now, once we have this boat started, take that lever right there, push it that way. Push it up, push it up. There you go, that's going to move the power from here back to there and run the generators. Whoa. Once our generators are started, we'll shut all this down. Go ahead and take those two switches and push it that way. Yeah. 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 And put this trip wire over there, and we send that over into the electric motor. You did that good. We're that's ready good. for the Good job, you're ready for the <laughs> Our next stop is Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Nope. Sounds pretty good, huh? She likes Hawaii. <laughs> the problem is, it's going to take us about three weeks to get there. And on this tour, there is only one qualified submarine sailor. <laughs> that means the rest of you guys get to clean the bilges. Oh, boy. Have you guys ever cleaned a bilge before? No. I don't know how to catch the rest Not even. Give you an idea what a bilge smells like. Let's see. Here in Oregon, we have Corvallis and Eugene. Go down during one of the Civil Wars. Uh, did that about fourth quarter. Did I hit a porta potty? Uh, or worse. Worse. Not a chance. You can clean the bills. <laughs> Whatever. I hire people. Any other questions? Uh, folks, follow me. Okay. More batteries, I think. Some kind of electrical stuff.
68 USS Scorpion. Scorpion had an explosion on board, blew the hatches. I meant to do that. Did you go stand over there with your mom so I can get the oh, yeah, stack thing in the background? Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. 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 Thank